Hi, in this video we'll take a look at how to use the jQuery templating engine with the Web Data Grid. In 2010 Volume 3, we enhanced the Web Data Grid control to be able to use the client templates that's part of the jQuery project. What happens when you use templating is all your data is converted into JSON array and then passed it on to the client. So it really helps in terms of performance during initial load where your entire grid markup is not generated onto the server and even with AJAX callbacks, so when you make calls like to uh, paging or virtual scrolling, all what's transferred back from the server is just the JSON data. So let's get started and see how you can implement the jQuery templates within the Web Data Grid. What I have in front of me is a blank Visual Studio 2010 website project. I'm going to come to my toolbox and I'm going to drop a Web Data Grid onto my form. Once I have that, I'll use SQL data source to pull in data from my SQL server. Now for our data source, we'll use the invoices table from Northwind. It has about 2,000 records, so it will give us a good data to view. Let's just test it out. Okay, looks good. Finish. Now let's connect the data to our web data grid. And it's asking me if I want to generate columns automatically. Yes, I want to do that. And let's come to our source and set up some properties for the grid. First, what I want is to set a default column width so that all columns are 150 pixels wide. And I get a horizontal score bar. And finally, because it's an ASP.NET AJAX control, we'll need a script manager under the form. So instead of rather than using the ASP.NET AJAX script manager, I'm using the web script manager. This is so I'm going to drop that that on the form. So I'm going to enable paging in in the markup. On the columns, you'll see in the markup there is a behaviors uh, collection, and I will put IG paging inside of my grid, and I set a page size of 300 records so that it displays 300 records per page. Okay, once I have that, let's run it again and um, let's see what we have at runtime. So now here's our grid with about eight pages and you can see all the data has been loaded. And I can move through different pages. And so let's go and in view source and look at the markup. So here we have view state that's been loaded up and if you scroll down, here's our grid markup. It starts from all the way here, as you can see main content, web data grid client side, there's some client state information, but really the table that contains the entire data starts from somewhere around uh, here. So you can see salesperson required dead quantity freight and if I scroll down a little bit, Here's all the data, pretty much. Starting from here all the way, the table goes, and um, and you see that all these TD and TR tags have been repeated for each and every row of data that comes from the client, from the server. So there's a lot of extra markup that's been generated from the server, and uh, and if if there's a way we can avoid that, we should do that because it's it's going to help with the initial load of the page. So client templates would would actually give us that. So let me close view source. And um, one more thing I'm going to do here is is I'm going to basically start mapping out how long or what's the size of of each page as I page in the grid. So let's go back to page one. And I'm going to open a Firebug. It has been recording, but I'm going to clear this for now. And I'm going to move a couple of pages. So let's go to page two. And let's move to page three. And let's do it one more time, page four. So as you can see, that it was recording each of my um, page changes. And you can see the size is about. 400 kilobytes and the total size is 1.2 meg. I want to take a screenshot of this and um, and compare it with once we have templates enabled. So let me minimize this for now. 
so let's go back to our Visual Studio stop the project and go back and write some code okay so my page load event all I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my web data grid to enable client rendering equals true and that's about it now there are a couple of things that I've added to the page beforehand is you need jQuery templates plugin and also the jQuery core library in your project so if I go to source what I mean by that is these two lines of JavaScript code which is where the templating engine sits and it's going to be triggered when you enable client rendering on the web data grid so make sure you have both of these references in your project when using templating now then let's run this again so the first thing we're going to look at is the source of, source of the page so view page source let's scroll down got past the view state and here's our entire grid markup so right after you see the column headers been finished about at this point there's a new table that's created and that just contains these tags so for ship address ship code and this is this is the actual jQuery templates that, are, that is being rendered and there's no data and your grid markup finish finishes about right here and all your data is is in, in JSON format so if I scroll down you'll see that this plain JSON being grabbed from the server and just passed it as, as a JSON array so all your data is sitting in, in JSON right here okay let's close this and now let's do those operations that we did with the with the grid when jQuery templates were disabled or not enabled um, so let's go to page number two three and four again same data let's do page number two page number three and page number four okay so let's bring our screenshot back in okay so here you go here you can see that for the first operation it took 394 kilobytes it took 250 kilobytes for the second two about 250 and 260 and the overall operation cost us 765 kilobytes uh, as compared to 1.2 megabytes when templates were disabled and this is just an example on a local server um, using local host as a server one user doing different operations just you can just supply these operations with the number of using users hitting your site and um, and the distance the, the the actual server is from the client machine so when the size is small it takes faster to go through the wire um, so here you can see that um, it's very easy to enable jQuery templates within the web data grid and uh, and you get the benefit immediately as soon as, as soon as you set the property client rendering to true thanks for watching this video I hope it was helpful infragistics on the web at infragistics.com